हेलो हाय आई एम डॉक्टर अवतार कृष्ण गंजू हेमेटोलॉजिस्ट एट अमेरिकन ऑनकोलॉजी इंस्टीट्यूट नागपुर आई एम इन प्रैक्टिस फॉर लास्ट मोर देन थर्टी इयर्स इन हेमेटोलॉजी व्हाट इज हेमेटोलॉजी हेमेटोलॉजी इज बेसिकली डिजीजेज रिलेटेड टू ब्लड सो व्हाट इज ब्लड ब्लड कंसिस्ट ऑफ फिफ्टी प्लाज्मा दैट इज वाटर एंड फोर्टी सेलर एलिमेंट्स I deal with the cellular elements. These cellular elements are RBC, WBCs and platelets. Most of these cell 45% is occupied by the red cells, some of it by WBCs and some of the platelets. So we have three cells, the RBC, WBC and platelets. The RBC make the hemoglobin. WBC is our immune system. It takes care of our body from infection. And platelets basically if you get an injury it will help in stopping the blood so we have three very important elements one is giving you strength that is hemoglobin wbc which takes care of your body like like police in the city or the army in the country and platelets which will help us if there is any 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 break in contiguity or break in skin or there is a bleeding it will it will try to stop that bleeding so these are the three elements and therefore the diseases are related to all these if the rbcs are affected you can have low hemoglobin you can have high hemoglobin if you have low hemoglobin they are known as anemias and there are diseases where hemoglobin goes up like polycythemias similarly you have wbcs where if the wbcs fall that leads to neutropenia or wbc can go high they can increase in number and similarly we can have low platelet counts and high platelet counts depending upon the different kinds of diseases they need to be discovered once the patient comes to our clinic we try to find out we try to figure out what the patient has a problem so if patient comes with anemia we try to look for the cause of anemia one should understand that all these three cellular elements they are produced in the bone marrow bone marrow seems to be the factory where all these cells are being produced now they these while these cells are being produced you have different you know different stages of maturation of these cells but the most important thing is that all these three cells will have a common parentage that is they will have a common parent what is known as pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell and this is what is known as stem cell we commonly know so this stem cell which can give rise to all the rbcs wbcs and the platelets which are circulating in blood that seems to be the 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 father so if the father gets defect or becomes sick it will be manifested in all these three cell lines or you can have only one cell line getting affected like yes, for example somebody has iron deficiency he develops anemia only anemia wbcs and platelets are spared or somebody develops b12 folic acid deficiency only rbcs are affected patient becomes anemic you can have only isolated wbcs dropping down or one can have an isolated drop in platelets so anything whenever it is isolated rbc going down wbc going down platelet going down it may not be a bad disease most of the time these are the diseases which which can be taken care but there are some diseases which may be difficult to treat also but one fact is there whenever these three cell lines are not working properly or they have decreased in number like somebody has anemia somebody has low wbc count or low platelet count then it has to be a bad disease because at this period of time it seems that the stem cell has got affected so when this stem cell get up gets affected all these three cell lines go bad whereas if the stem cell is not getting affected only one cell so remember whenever when, whenever you go to a clinic you know the doctor examines you and finds out you have only anemia if you have only anemia you he, he or whatever uh, symptoms are there and he feels that it's a hematologic disorder they commonly do the cbc complete blood count which will count all your cells it will count your rbc it will count your wbcs it will count your platelets now on the cbc itself we know whether it's a single line defect it's a double line defect all three cell lines gone now if we uh, we have a two cell line going on suppose somebody has a low hemoglobin at, at the same time he has a low wbc count or somebody has only low hemoglobin and low platelet count or somebody has a low hemoglobin low wbc and low platelet count all these three so whenever you have two 
cells going down or three cells going down, we need to do the bone marrow and find out what has gone wrong because usually the defect stays in the bone marrow. So when the RBCs are affected, it's anemia. When WBCs are affected or WBC go up, or platelets go up or platelets go down, there are different diseases. So you can have a benign disease, one can have a malignant disease. A, a, benign, a malignant disease is where the cells continuously proliferate. Now normally what happens, you know, if the, the WBCs has, to, the, the, while the WBCs are being produced, they will attain a count, like for example, the normal count may vary from 4,500 to 10,000. But if it becomes a malignant, it may go to 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, maybe a lakh, two lakh, three lakhs. It doesn't obey the normal inhibitory stimuli. So it continuously proliferates and what you see is the whole bone marrow gets occupied by all these abnormal, increasing number of cells. So once it occupies the whole bone marrow, that means the bone marrow has failed because other cell lines, they cannot be produced. There's no space for red cell production or there's no space for the platelet production and therefore the hemoglobin drops, the normal WBC drops, normal platelet drops. So these patients, they will develop the symptoms which are related to all these cell lines like for example if the patient develops low hemoglobin becomes anemic becomes weak low WBC becomes febrile or has fever and low platelet count he develops perpetrix spires or spots on skin or he can have a nasal bleed he can have a bleeding from the gums or he can have, have bleeding from any other side so all these when we see the CBC we can understand what kind of disease is there whether it is a unicellular disease or it's a multicellular disease and depending on that we investigate. Now if somebody has only one cell line, we normally would look into the peripheral blood and try to figure out why these cells have gone down. When we have three cell line defect or two cell line defect, we go and see the bone marrow and try to figure out what disease is there. So in leukemia, it's the WBCs which are getting affected. Acute leukemia is WBCs are getting affected. And therefore, once we know that patient has acute leukemia after seeing the bone marrow, he needs further investigations to find out the, uh, the kind of disease it is having, how bad it is and how good disease it is by the molecular markers we do. And then they need to be treated, so they need to be hospitalized. While we keep them in the hospital, they need to be there if it's an acute leukemia, they need to be there for two to three weeks. And depending upon the type of acute leukemia, because the blood is there everywhere, and therefore we don't stage them as stage one, stage two, stage three, four, like the solid tumors as the common people, they understand. It is not, the staging is not like that. Staging depends upon the name of the disease, whether it is an acute lymphoblastic leukemia or it is an acute myeloid leukemia. They will have different kinds of prognosis. That means they will have different kinds of uh, the results. Like for example, acute lymphoblastic leukemia has a better result, whereas acute myeloid leukemia has a bad result. And the bad and good, even in acute lymphoblastic leukemia or AML, will depend upon certain molecular markers which we do once we make a diagnosis and try to figure out uh, what molecular markers are there. There are some good markers, some bad markers. If there are good markers, we see that the patient is going to do well. If there are bad markers, maybe from uh, from the start of we may we may take certain certain more steps to get this patient into control. So apart from acute leukemia, there's a malignant diseases, or we have the chronic leukemias. Now these chronic leukemias, they have a short, they have a long history. One may, sometimes what happens, you know, you go for fever to a physician and he gets your CBC done and finds out that he has chronic leukemia. So chronic leukemia stays there for a prolonged period of time. That may not manifest initially. It, it, it's seen sometime while we do routine investigation, figure out when they find that this is a chronic leukemia. Apart from the malignant disorders, we have the benign disorders, which are again very common in our community, in our, in our area, in the, in the geographical area where I live, is the sickle cell disease. A sickle cell disease is a red cell disorder. It's a genetic disorder, wherein the hemoglobin, the hemoglobin which is being produced is a different kind of hemoglobin. It's a sickle hemoglobin. The property of sickle hemoglobin is that whenever the oxygen goes down, it's the, the hemoglobin starts solidifying. It forms long tetramers. And these tetramers, they will change the shape of the red cell from the dumbbell 
to a pro, to to you know it could be a, a, you know sickle like shape and once it becomes sickle and very hard it cannot move into the blood vascular system and therefore blocks the blood vessels and that creates the pain so sickle cell disease is a disease which is very commonly present here and therefore we we see quite common you know at least 10% of our practice is all sickle cell disease and therefore we need to know about it and treat them accordingly uh, if we can manage these sickle cellers this sickle cell disease and which is commonly in the poor patients we do help these patients we do uh, handle them very gently so that uh, they do well and we try uh, to prolong uh, to, to prolong their life by by the best kind of treatment what can be given to these patients and they are being counseled we teach them how to uh, to to uh, lead their life so that they have uh, less of sickle cell crisis similarly you have low platelet counts going on and the commonest disease with low platelet count is itp and these itp that means it's not the problem with the bone marrow these platelets they die outside they die in the peripheral blood because of certain antibodies and most of these itps in children that may recover on on its own but some of these patients they will require some kind of treatment so that we reduce their antibodies and their platelets come back so thus we see that in hematologic uh, diseases you have very simple diseases like benign disorders and then you have malignant disorders and there are some coagulation disorders wherein the coagulation proteins may be less like in hemophilias factor 8 deficiency or um, different kinds of hemophilias factor 8 or factor 9 or factor 11 which are a uh, little common uh, as opposed to the other uh, you know bleeding disorders all these disorders we take care at our hospital our institute in nagpur American Oncology Institute and we we have a good support system here we have good lab, laboratory system where we can make diagnosis and treat these patients very well we have extremely good uh, you know wards and indoor facilities uh, wherein uh, they they can be taken care uh, with ease we do have a, a bone marrow transplant unit where we transplant patients who have malignant disorders the commonest uh, transplants which are being done in acute leukemia and in uh, the, auto, the the transplants are of two types as we know is the autologous transplant wherein you use your own bone marrow patient's bone marrow to treat them because they cannot take up the high doses of chemotherapy so we give them the bone marrow back and you can have the other way is the allogenic bone marrow wherein we take the bone marrow from a donor source to treat these malignant disorders So the treatment of all hematologic disorders is there in our institute at American Oncology Institute Nagpur. We have a good hospital with all the facilities including the bone marrow transplant. So if there is any query or anything you require to know about the hematologic disorders you are all welcome to visit this institute and see the facility what we provide to our patients.